All right, back on Morning Line, our final segment this morning with Barbara McGinnis, elder law attorney, taking your questions and calls. We've had a, quite a few of those this morning, and if you'd like to join us in this final segment, do. Uh, Barbara, I've got one scenario on a will I'd like to ask you. Are you there with us? Yeah, there you are. Just wanted to make I sure. Am. All right, yeah. so I don't know if you saw this story. You've probably never had to deal will with a uh, will like this before, but uh, uh, actually someone I knew uh, passed away a while back, a wealthy gentleman, and in his will, um, he specified most of his assets, and then he left $5 million for his dog, Lulu. <laughs> Lulu well, is a border collie, and I've seen, I have a copy of the will. It's going through probate right now, and I don't believe it's being challenged. There is some question if he actually has a full $5 million, but he was wealthy. I'm just curious, something like that. Uh, when it comes to wills, if you specify it clearly, you can leave that amount of money or whatever you'd like to a pet, can you not? You can. Uh, but you actually don't leave it to your pet. You leave it for the care uh, and benefit of your pet yeah. to to a trustee. Right. So <clears throat> you'd have, and, and actually that's a very important thing to do. Sure. And as part of our estate plan is making sure that there are provisions for all of the people and things that we love. Uh, not only our surviving spouses or children, but including our pets, how, and we sort of owe that to them. How are they going right. to be managed? $5 million is a bit extreme, <laughs> but uh, Lulu may have some expensive taste. Nah. And, uh, but you know, it's there. So there's going to be provisions for how's that pet going to be taken right. care of, vet of choice. How are they going to be maintained? Um, what sort of provisions to make sure that Lulu doesn't meet an untimely death? Like what happens to those funds at her passing? Mm -hmm. um, because you don't want all the caretaker all of a sudden to reach a windfall. Right. If, uh, if, the, if the dog prematurely passes. You know, some other things that you might want to include in your estate plan, uh, like I mentioned, would be to, to make provisions for your children. And if you have minor children, you certainly do want to have a will that names a guardian for mm -hmm. your children. Mm -hmm. If you do not, if your children are not minors, but, or grandchildren, and this happens a lot for some of my clients, they want to make provisions in their estate for their grandchildren. Maybe it's for education purposes. Maybe it's just to help them get started in life kind of thing. Do they need a trust? And so the question then between the person and the attorney preparing the estate plan would be, do we want to create a trust during your lifetime? Do you want to create a trust in your estate documents, like in your will or trust for these beneficiaries? And that's particularly good for pe younger people that may have trouble with money management. We want them to get money, but we don't want to get them a big chunk of money all at once. So we include terminating age, meaning they can have little bits of money until they turn whatever, 30, 35, and then they can get the rest of it. So there might be a trust set aside for children that are spendthrifts or maybe for children that have um, substance abuse problems or gambling addictions, or maybe you're just worried that they're not married well and you wanna make sure their funds, their inheritance stays in trust instead of potentially becoming part of a divorce proceeding down the road. Interesting. So definitely something to think about is how are you gonna take care of your children? Also thinking about how are you gonna take care of your uh, surviving spouse? Mm -hmm. Perhaps your spouse is not well and you need a testamentary, meaning inside your, your estate document, um, special needs trust for that surviving spouse but so that they just can be cared for. The spouse? Doesn't everything just transfer to the spouse uh, automatically or do you have to specify maybe, that? Maybe. Maybe. It depends huh. on how you own assets uh, while you're both living. Okay. Obviously, if you own them jointly, then it's going to go to the, the surviving joint owner. But if you have assets in your name only, and maybe it's not a good idea for your surviving spouse to get the money outright 
But you can't disinherit a spouse either, not completely, unless there is a prenuptial agreement that provides for that. So a lot of times, the reason you see an attorney about your estate plan is this this whole working through the scenarios and how it's unique to your life and what how we can create and craft documents that meet your goals. Um, yes, you can download a lot of generic documents off the internet, but whether or not they're right and for your particular life is really the question that you're getting counsel for. So not only protecting spouse, children, pets, but maybe you're a business owner and you need a succession plan. Um, You need a succession plan put in place before you die, but you also may want to stipulate where your your interest in a business is going to uh, go and how do you want that managed and wrapped up because you've probably spent a lot of years building a business, building a life. You don't want it just to um, crumble for lack of planning for an end. This is all these that things. Sense? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, <laughs> I was just thinking as you were going through that litany of, of items that it, it's, it's hard to talk about all this stuff because you're still alive, hopefully, and maybe you're not sick, but you want to get this all in place. You're getting older. You can get with a firm like yours, come and sit down with you <clears throat> and, and your experts and go over all those things, get it all done, lock, sock, and barrel, not to say you couldn't change it, but you can still be young, healthy with plans to do things, but get it all done and then it's out of your hair you never have to think about it again right unless you want to make some changes or unless you have some significant change in your value of your property or whatever it's just going through that is not only a pain in the butt it's depressing to think about no one likes to do it i wouldn't think but if you can just bite the bullet and get it out of the way is it true then you can just kind of move on and not worry about it knowing it's already in place love that you said that because it's absolutely not true. And I think a lot of people get in trouble with uh, thinking that it is true, that I can get my estate plan done and I can just mark that lit off my things of grown up things to do and I never have to worry about it again. We tell people all the time estate planning is a process and just like you change as a person, the life around you changes. Perhaps the people around you change, some yeah. go away, some some new ones come in, circumstances change, um, your health could change, your wealth could change, and all of that could impact your estate plan. So you have to be completely open to the idea that you need to review and perhaps revise your estate plan as you age. Sometimes to do that with marriages, deaths, births, Uh, changes in wealth or health and if for no other reason just sufficient time has passed that you need to make sure that it is still accurate and reflects your goals and wishes so probably if nothing changes in your life you probably still ought to look at it about every 10 years to make sure there's not been law changes that you're not aware of um, that could impact your estate plan And it's not just your will, your trust, your powers of attorney, but you need to look at things like your beneficiary designations on your life insurance and your 401k and IRA plan. Are they accurate? I'm glad you laid that out. Listen, I guess my point would be then at least you know you've got your framework down and I think making the modifications as the changes you describe come about, it's a heck of a lot easier than starting from scratch because you've gotten that main primary framework and then you go back in and do the updates as you just said, Barbara. And that's that's part of what Takis and McGinnis do. Would you tell Tim that I said hi? I would love to. He's right next door. Okay. Uh, I'll tell him you said tell hi, him I said and hi. that we look forward to being. Yeah, look forward to being on your show again. Yep. I'd also like to invite you and your audience to check out our podcast, cool. which is called Aging Starts Now. Uh, it's available on all podcast platforms, I guess. You can even find out more information on our website. We have some great guests on our podcast. Awesome. Well, Barbara, thank you for coming on. And when we come back and I wrap things up on my own, we'll have the contact information and all of that, including the website for the viewers to check that out. Thanks for joining us, Barbara. Take care and we'll see you again soon. Thanks. Thank you.